Tom, wait a minute. Oh, I've been oh, trying to get a hold of you. I thought maybe we could have lunch or something, eh? Oh, I hate hospital food. <laughs> well, I know, so do I. But how about today? Have you eaten yet? No, but I'm on a tight schedule and I'm running behind. Then I, I was hoping I'd get a chance to talk to you about Jill Smith. How's everything coming along? Everything's coming along fine. Why wouldn't it? Hey, hey, wait a minute. You're a little churned up today, aren't you? Oh, I've got a lot on my mind. I know. Oh, what's that supposed to mean? Look, why don't we go over to the drugstore and get a sandwich or something, huh? I'm busy. Tom, wait a minute. Listen. We are going to talk about Jill Smith. We are. Yeah, I, I know you've got a lot on your mind. That's what I want to hear. You know, when things upset me, I go into the chapel and I pray. So I don't need these friendly little talks. See ya. Pardon me, are you saving the seat? Oh, no, I'm sorry. I'm just saving these books from Charlie's soupy egg salad sandwich. Watch that stuff. Thank you. Uh, one large side of Charlie, please. With or without? I'm taking up all the counter, aren't I? Oh, no. No, no. Anyway, I'm, I'm sure that the Brothers Harrington are far more interesting than the Brothers Karamazov. <laughs> that was really a bunch of characters. I made a book report on it once. It must have been awfully long. No, it was very short. And of course, I got an F. <laughs> One house special. Thank you. You're welcome. You're married to one of the Harrington brothers, aren't you? Yeah, Norman. I'm Rita Harrington. I'm Carolyn Russell. I know. I've seen you around. Yes, I've seen you as well. You were at the shoreline the other night. We were celebrating. It made me feel sort of old. Well, you don't look very much older than I. <sighs> I feel a lot older. A couple of years makes a lot of difference, I guess. <laughs> May I ask you kind of a dopey question? Sure. What is it like being married? What do you mean? Well, I mean, is it wonderful? Is it all wine and roses? Yeah, most of the time. Most of the time. You can't live on wine and roses. You were awfully young when you married, weren't you? Yes. I bet your mother must have had a, had a fit. <laughs> Not really. Well, I know mine would have been absolutely devastated. Well, mine didn't have a chance. Because we eloped. Oh, that must have been a gas. Are you thinking about getting married? Oh, oh no. I'm simply curious. I can't imagine what it would be like to have my own home and live with someone all the time. Well, no matter how much you read about it or think about it, you never really will know until you get married. And then I suppose it's too late. Well, sometimes I'm do know some people who have married the wrong person, and it hasn't lasted. My parents, for instance. Mine, too. I, I mean, how do you know that you haven't made a mistake until you've lived with someone for a while? <laughs> you sound just like I did a couple of years ago. Except I was worried that Norm was making a mistake. And yet you went ahead anyway. How did you know that you were doing the right thing? I didn't know. I guess I was just lucky. Well, there must be a more intelligent way. You mean like computers? What? You know, where they match you up scientifically. Oh. <laughs> no, I think I'd be afraid of being mutilated, folded, and or spindled. <laughs> well, I wouldn't worry about it. You seem to have lots of friends and fun. I mean, it's nothing you have to rush into. No, I guess not. And you know, I bet your mother is the kind you can really talk to. She is, most of the time. You know, this may shock you, but sometimes they're right, with mothers. I guess this old married lady better do some marketing now. I'll see you later. Bye, and thank you very much. For what? Well, sometimes it's nice to talk to an old married lady. Anytime.
Hey, you can really handle that thing. Thank you. It's a good bike. You tuned it well. Listen, I, I was wondering, maybe you can do us a favor. Could I? Well, you see, we Norman and I have never raced before. Cross country? Oh, you got a wild time coming. Oh, yeah? You think maybe you could give us a couple of pointers? Sure, anytime. Uh, listen, David, could I call you tonight? Maybe we could do it tomorrow the next day? Fine. Feel free. Oh, that's great. Thank you. Huh. Well, at least now we're going to know what we're doing, huh? Yeah, it'll be a help. Come on, let's get back to the garage. I have a feeling we're going to sell ten bikes today. We'll make it an even dozen. Come on! Wait, wait, wait! I want to drive it! I want to drive it! Why? Well, you drove one over here? Yeah, but I drove the other one. So what? Well, uh, I don't like to be a passenger. Shh, don't say that. It's bad for business. I get car sick. Well, I have an idea. What? Walk back. No, no, wait. I got a better one. We'll wrestle. Uh, two out of three. I know something very physical we could do. Flip a coin. Okay, but we got to use mine. Fine. Heads. Well, I was going to say that. Why didn't you? Because I knew one side was tails, but I couldn't figure out what the other side was. Heads it is. Heads it is. My own half a buck, too. Let's go! Can I turn on some music? I'd rather talk. I'd rather not. How much further? Not much. How you doing back there? I got a great view of the back of your helmet. <laughs> Preview from the continuing story of Peyton Place. Your brother said he was meeting you. What's up? An emergency. Tell him to call me at the hospital immediately. Dr. Ross doesn't know how bad it'll be until after the operation. Here you are again demanding to be part of my life. You're going to destroy us. It's true, you know, it's true. Oh. 